Welcome to the Accelerate Church broadcast. We believe you will be inspired and encouraged to follow God and His Word when you hear Pastor Jeremy preach today on the sermon series, The Blessing or the Curse. Let's head into the sanctuary now for that wisdom and insight he shares from God's Word. Stop calling things that are the curse the blessing and things that are the blessing the curse. Listen to me. The Lord wants to bless His children. You want to bless your children, right? How much more do you think the Heavenly Father wants to give good gifts to His children? Like Jesus, He said, you being evil, (laughs) know how to give good gifts to your children. Isn't that something? What He meant by that statement is, you have the ability to choose evil. God, He's not evil. There's no evil in Him. He doesn't even have the choice. He's God. He's perfect in all of His ways. Yet you, having the choice to be evil, you still give good gifts to your children. And He gave some illustrations. If they say, you know, I want a scrambled egg, you don't force a scorpion down their throat, do you? If you do, you're not a good parent, right? We all agree on that. You hungry? Yeah, want some fish. Uh, Eat a rock. Nobody's doing that. My kids were hungry. We're not like, well, get out there and eat them rocks. What are you doing? We're good parents. We know We need to give them some good food, right? Well, if we know that, how much more? Hit this. Luke 11. I love this. Somebody needs to hear this tonight. I sense it right here. How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them who ask? The gift of the Holy Spirit, evidenced by speaking in tongues, is for every believer. If you're living without it, make this the last night you live without it. Alex over here who led worship tonight, great job, by the way, our drummer, who, by the way, is getting in more and more high demand because you don't realize what a skilled drummer. He's a skilled musician, praise God. All all of our guys are, but, man, he's been playing for some of Dr. Barclay's conferences. He's got how many more this year signed up? Two or three at least. Three or four. See, it grows every time I talk to him. I'm like, back off. He's ours, right? We saw him as a seed, but he's committed to being here. You know what? He called me a few years ago. He was running a mail route in an old... I say it was old because it was broken down beside the highway, truck or van or some kind of vehicle. He calls me and says, I'm waiting on a tow truck. I'm over here by Higgins, Texas. I've been to Higgins. Not everybody has, you know. But he said, I'm over here by Higgins. He said, i got a question for you. Do I have to be there in person and you lay hands on me to receive the Holy Spirit? I said, no. Do you got your Bible? He said, yeah. So I took him right through part of what I just showed you there in Luke 11. If you see it's in Luke 11, you can study it sometime. I said, do you want the Holy Spirit? He said, yeah. So I just prayed with him on the phone. He received the Holy Spirit, prayed in tongues pretty much the whole time until the tow truck showed up. You can receive on the side of the highway if you simply want it. And God doesn't say, oh, Alex, he's my pet child. I favor him, but I, I don't favor you. I don't want you to have it. No, he's a good God. And he wants to bless his children. You got that? So when it comes to the blessing or the cursing, you've got to know God wants you blessed. In fact, we've read in this that Christ died and he hung on a tree, remember? Galatians 3. So that we would be free from the curse and blessed with Abraham's blessing. That's what God wants. But what we have to do on our end is stop making up our own definitions of things. Right? We've got to allow the Word of God to define things for us. So we'll know what to believe for, what to put up with, And what to resist. It's amazing. See, I already talked about the Holy Spirit. And some people, because of things you've been taught previous, you say, well, that's not for everyone. It was just for the apostles. These things are false doctrines. There is no scripture that said it's passed away. It's for every believer. Plus, I pray in the Spirit every single day of my life. Multiple times a day. The best days in my life are when I spend hours praying in the Holy Ghost. The best sermons I ever preach are when I spend hours praying in the Holy Spirit. Why? Because then I'm pinpoint accurate with what I'm saying. And it hits you right where you're living. And then you're like, Pastor, you're watching videos on my security system or something. No, no. But the Holy Spirit is. (laughs) I like that. Well, we've been looking at this story. i got to get to it. Of Esau and Jacob, the blessing of the curse. I don't have time to backtrack if you missed any of this. Get our app, go to our website, get it for free, sign up for a CD. We'll get a copy in in your hands for free. 
Uh, and you need to get this. you got to get this. And this story is powerful because the Holy Spirit in the book of Hebrews warns end-time Christians about not being like Esau. Right? That's what kind of got us off on this. So go to Genesis 29. I'm just going to pick up where I left off on Sunday. Say, thank God for the Word. Thank God for the word. Genesis 29, 18. Jacob loved Rachel. Basically at first sight. So he told Laban, I will serve you seven years for Rachel, your younger daughter. Laban said, verse 19, Genesis 29 is where I'm reading. It's better that I give her to you than that I should give her to another man. Stay with me. So verse 20 tells us in Genesis 29 that Jacob served Laban seven years for Rachel. And they seemed, those seven years, only seemed like a few days. <laughs> I like that. Because of the love he had for her. I pity the fool. To quote someone you probably shouldn't quote, who's never felt this kind of love. I, I really do. But most of you in here, you're a Wednesday night crowd at a remnant church here in the end time hour. It's crazy to even join and come to church in midweek. You're so busy, right? So that means you probably have experienced at some point in your life this love for the Lord, where you were just overwhelmed by the goodness of God when you realized He actually would speak to you. I've been telling the staff this recently, and it's something that we live by. I know people don't want to hear about God as much as they want to hear from God. So we got to make sure that when you're here, that you have ears to hear what the Spirit of God is speaking. Don't just get caught up in the natural. Really focus on the Word. Come hungry. Pull, and you'll receive from the Holy Spirit that God will speak to you. He's speaking every day. And He wants to speak to you individually. He wants a relationship with you. Well, when you have a love like this, like Jacob had for Rachel, it makes marriage fun, just to be honest with you. And when you take that love, that first, you know, I call it like a burning love, your first love, the Bible calls it. Serving God is just easy whenever you're in love with Him. Right? It's when you start waning that it becomes a burden. Accelerate Christian School is located in Amarillo, Texas and offers individualized learning for students kindergarten through 12th grade. With scripture-filled curriculum, daily devotions, and weekly chapel services, our number one priority is instilling God's Word on the heart of the next generation. For more information regarding Accelerate Christian School, please visit our website at acceleratechristianschool.cc or you can call our office, 806-418. 8913. It's a terrible, terrible sign when you're serving and you back out. Because that, that's like, you know, you're loving your wife, you, you have a date, date night every week, you, you give her flowers, and all of a sudden you stop doing that for the next five years. That's not a good sign. You got that? So if you have a love for the Lord, like serving in his house is like pretty much the premium joy of your whole life because he's the only one that hung on a cross for you. He's the only one that died for you. And see, if you lose that perspective, then it becomes a burden. You got that? Don't feel bad if you stop doing something. I'm not, I'm not aiming this at anybody. I'm just telling you this. Sometimes you got to make adjustments, but let me tell you, you better get back to serving pretty quick. Why? Because it will affect your love walk with God. And if you don't love the Lord, you're going to be swept up by this end time dark cloud where the Antichrist spirits are behind this. There is a dark cloud. There is a glory cloud. And which one is pulling on you tonight? I sat in church. I didn't miss a service. And yet I got more and more compromised, more and more worldly. And it's not that pastor's fault. It's not what I mean. I never know. He might be watching. I'm not slamming him. He was my pastor. But I became worldly sitting there. And I said, how could that be? And God set me up with men. Who, who know what's happening prophetically. Pastor Keith Johnson preached. My dad and mom went to the conference in Fort Worth. They called me and said, I know you're on fire for God. My mom, I remember, said this. You really need to hear this message from Pastor Keith Johnson down here at Revival Now in Fort Worth. He was as passionate as I hear you. He was so passionate preaching about the sons of Issachar, knowing what time it is. Man, I got that CD. I listened to it. Put on my, my little device there and listen to it and listen to it. And I remember that next summer I, I had a pool. I would sit out there day after day and listen to that sermon over and over. It's a, over a two-hour sermon. Y'all thought I was long-winded because I go an hour? This was over two hours. 
But I loved every minute of it. I was hanging on every word. And he starts describing a vision that a man told him about that he had at a Brother Hagen meeting where he saw a dark cloud and it was sucking Christians into it. Some of them were excited running into it. They've been wanting to be worldly. And here's someone tell them, scratch their ear and say, it's okay to be worldly. They love it. And they go right into it. Others are trying to get away from it, but it has a pull on them. A lot of those people, it's because they had the wrong friends or go to the wrong church. I'm hearing this. I'm like, that's what happened to me. I didn't miss church. My pastor could depend on me being there. In fact, in the five years I was at that church, I think I missed two services. That ain't much to miss. Boy, I felt bad, too, when I did it. That's, that's where I was. So, see, I wasn't this pagan out here in, this, in the world, right? I'm sitting up in church, and all of a sudden I look at my life. I become a sipping Christian, drinking. I become a Christian playing poker behind my wife's back. Didn't even know it. Not much other stuff I'm doing. And much less my dad, by the way, I'd have, I'd have lost my job on the spot if he knew either one of those. But he's, I heard him, amen. <laughs> I hear him over here in my right, amen. <laughs> I knew to hide it from him because my dad's never been a compromiser. But I'm trying to figure this out. How could I go to church and become worldly? I didn't go to church to become worldly. How could I? Trying to figure it out. And, and the Lord's explaining it to me. And Pastor Keith Johnson's preaching this message. Like a man from another world. Honestly, he was, if you remember that message, he was preaching so passionate about knowing what time it is. I mean, it's fire. I, like, I literally, a couple times, was listening to it. And I'd stand up, ah! just, yeah, I'm so fired up. Because I'm like, that's it, man, I'm ready. Jesus is coming. What are we doing? Because I was made for this. And I'm listening. And he says, he says this, that that man that had that vision had talked to Brother Kenneth E. Hagin and had said in the back room, can I talk to you about this vision? And Brother Hagin said, no, but Isaiah knew what he was talking about. In chapter 60 there where he talks about a cloud, dark cloud. Okay, but now get this. Brother Hagin told him, I won't be alive when this is happening, but you will. That caught my attention. Pastor Keith Johnson at the time, he didn't think he was released to say who it was because Dr. Mark T. Barkley is the one that had that vision. And he told him, I'm, I'm not released to share that until right now. This was in 2008, 2009, right in that time frame. So that's when this first was being released, and the Holy Spirit gave him the green light to release this publicly. Guess what? It, it exactly described my life. Here, I love the Lord. I go to church, and I become worldly. How could that be? There's a dark cloud. And I'm telling you right now, there's a lot of good people in this area. They go to church. But when they go to church, there's no real life of God coming and hitting them. Instead, there are people that are just trying to be cool. The coolest church. And that market is crowded in this city. God didn't call me to that. Thank God. I think it's a, we have a pretty cool church, but I'm not trying to have a cool church. I'm trying to have a church that makes a disciple out of you. That's it. That's what this, so that, you know, there's not a whole lot of hype with that. But I'll tell you right now, when you have a love for God burning on the inside of you, living, working, serving, ministering with Him is the best thing that I can even tell you there is in life. There is nothing better than that. I said when you have a love burning for Him on the inside, if that fire's gotten cold and you become worldly, preaching the way I preach, it'll tick you off. It will. I already know. I like what Josh told me this today. I, I like this. He said, you know, your pastor, pa <laughs> talking to me, so your pastor says when you're a righteous preacher, you build two armies, those that love you and those that hate you. I said, man, thank you for that reminder. But I tell you this, I care more about what the Lord thinks than what any of you think. And that makes this a free, exciting place to be. Now, if you live your life that way, that'll make you a, a Christian that the devil hates because you're dangerous to him. Amen. Okay. I, this, see, I didn't get past where we were Sunday. I've got to move. <laughs> he loved her. I just see that. I, I see that, and I think about that first love. You, you should have your heart just beating for the Lord. Right? So then Jacob, verse 21, said to Laban, Give me my wife. <laughs> For my days are fulfilled that I may go into her. Look at verse 22. Laban gathered together all the men of the place, made a feast. Now it came to pass in the evening that he took Leah. Who? Okay. 
Remember this. Jacob was a shyster when he went and deceived his dad for the blessing. He proclaimed the blessing over him, but he did it the wrong way, not God's way. So get that. God didn't want him to do it that way. But God's will was that Jacob had the blessing, but he did it the wrong way. It's going to cost you when you do things the wrong way. So we're going to see right here one of several. I mean, we don't have time on the story to tell you all of them, but, but I'm going to tell you two biggies that came back to him. Let's look at this right here. Here's the beginning of one of them. Many of you know the story. He took Leah, but wait, wait, just a minute. Jacob is not in love with Leah. He's in love with Rachel. But Laban took Leah, his daughter, and brought her to Jacob, and he went into her. Now, I, you know, the scholars will tell you that she had a veil over her face because everybody tries to figure this out. How, how could he not know this was Leah and, and not Rachel? Well, there's a reason, but that's kind of a side issue to our point tonight. So look at verse 24, Genesis 29. Laban gave his maid Zilpha to his daughter Leah as a maid. So look at verse 25. So it came to pass in the morning. Sun comes up, he looks, and it's Leah. <laughs> uh-oh is right. Everybody should say, uh-oh, on that one. That's kind of a big uh-oh. You thought you were marrying the love of your life and you wake up with somebody else? Sounds like you've been drinking again. Sorry, I had to get that jab in there, you know. What's the service without getting that in there? He says, what is this you've done to me? Was it not Rachel that I served you? Why then have you what? Deceive me. Wait, wait a minute, Jacob. Didn't you do that exact thing? You deceived, didn't you? Ouch. Verse 26, Laban said, it must not be done so in our country to give the younger before the firstborn. I, you know, Jacob probably like, well, why didn't you tell me that yesterday? Or seven years ago. <laughs> right? I mean, now you tell me after the fact? Fulfill her week, and we'll give you this one also, two for the price of one. Except it wasn't because you got to serve another seven years. This cost him. So I want you to get this, and you got to pay attention. While Jacob was blessed, he had the blessing. He got it through deceitful means. So while he was blessed, Laban deceived him. You need to know this. If deception is sown... Deception will be reaped. This right here, what I'm talking to you about, is how you rightly divide one of the now most famous verses in the Bible that I checked with my guy that writes down every verse I preach. And I said, since you've been coming here tracking, have I ever preached on Matthew 7-1? He said, no. I said, well, I looked at my notes all the way back to 2018, the beginning of the year. I couldn't find anywhere I preached on Matthew 7, 1. And yet it's probably rivaling John 3, 16 tonight for most famous verses in the Bible. Here's what it says. Matthew 7, 1, Jesus speaking, do not judge. Let's read it the way it's written. Judge not that you be not judged. Now, here's the big hairy problem with this. A lot of people preach error. This is a big, big area right now in America where people are getting into outright heresy. That's a fancy word for this false doctrine that if believed, you will receive the Antichrist himself. Now, I, got a, I had a video sent to me today from a church member about uh, Canadian bankers and what they're wanting to do to create this digital profile. It, and it, honestly, I knew it was coming this way. It's going to streamline everything. And to keep up with your driver's license and all this stuff. It's just, it's going to make things way easier. People will jump on board for this. But this is going to be how the Antichrist controls. Do you understand the setup is already here? You, I mean, it's so believable now that there, there will be a huge amount of people. They're like, you can't buy, sell, you can't even eat or drink unless you take this. What was it? What was it? The setup. Put on a mask. Take a vaccine. Folks, I've, I mean, I've seen so many, even here in Amarillo, places. Regardless of vaccine status, you must wear a mask. Or others, if you've been fully vaccinated, you can come in. Take a hike. I won't shop there. Well, that's judgment on Jesus, and not to judge. 
See, only the devil, only the devil practices cherry picking like this and not seeing what was Jesus really saying. No, you, this is good for you tonight, okay? Because you need to get this. He says, judge not that you be not judged. For, see, he wasn't done talking. With what judgment you judge, you will be judged. So then he words it another way and says, with the measure you use, it will be measured back to you. So most people miss Jesus' entire point to what he's saying. Why? Well, what do you use to measure or to judge if something is right or wrong? You want to know what most Americans use? Are you ready for this? It's called opinion. I'm not talking about pinion wood you need to burn tonight because it's so cold. Opinion. <laughs> opinion doesn't determine right or wrong. Truth determines right or wrong. Your opinion doesn't even matter. But what God said, the truth, that's what matters. We believe in linking up with like-minded believers. And that opportunity comes twice a month where we get to come together with our life links and dig into the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching on. We eat together, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships that are so vital to our Christian walk. We must be intentional with who we surround ourselves with, so we invite you to join us for LifeLinks happening on the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month. For more information regarding LifeLinks and where they meet, you can text the word LifeLinks to the number 74121, or you can head over to our website at acceleratechurch.cc. Or hey, you can give us a call at 806 418 8913. We look forward to seeing you in the next Life Link. If God says something is right, it's right, even if 7.5 billion out of the 7.8 billion people alive say, no, that ain't right. It don't matter how many all come together in unification in error. The truth doesn't change. The truth determines what is right or wrong. The same measure in the case of Jacob deceiving his dad for the blessing was measured back to him when Laban deceived him. This isn't the end of the story with Jacob and Laban. I'm going to finish it here tonight, but I want to point something out since I'm dealing with the scripture that obviously I don't deal with very often. Jesus was not teaching never to judge. That was not what he was teaching here. Because look what he says just a few verses later in verse 6 of Matthew 7. If he meant do not judge, then we're going to have to reconcile why he said in verse 6 of Matthew 7, do not give what is holy to the dogs, nor cast your pearls before swine, lest they trample them under their feet and turn and tear you in pieces. I've heard it. You've heard it. Maybe you've said it. Don't judge. The good book says, don't judge. Especially those of you watching my TV, you probably said that. Don't judge. And preacher, you seem real judgmental. I am judgmental. The righteous judge everything. Now, that's a scripture, but I'm not going to preach that one tonight. I just want you to know this. If we're not supposed to judge anything, and that's what Jesus meant in verse 1 of this same chapter. Don't judge anybody or anything. We don't judge. How will we know when something's holy? How will we know who a dog is? How will we know what is a pearl? What is precious? How will we know who is a swine? How will we know? I can't judge after all. See, that shows you how the devil has wreaked havoc over people partially knowing the word. How are you going to reconcile this? I'll show you this quickly. I don't have time to, for the whole story. It's a good story. But Jesus basically called a Syrophoenician woman a dog when she was asking for her daughter to be delivered from a demon. And I just want you to lay your eyes on it. In Mark 7, 27, she asked him, could you come and, and make the demon leave my daughter? Jesus said to her, let the children be filled first, for it's not good to take the children's bread 
and throw it to the little dogs. If she had been American, she wouldn't have received deliverance of her daughter. You know why? Americans would have been puffed up. Who does he think he is calling me a dog? Well, Jesus, he happened to know the difference between a covenant child of God and a dog that's outside a covenant. You see, a dog used, and you understanding this is vital, a dog is anyone outside a covenant with God. So you don't give what's holy to the pagan. That's why, and I'm just going to say this, you know, people like Katy Perry are very, very dangerous for you to listen to. Church girl, raised in the church. Anytime anyone gets on her little show, I hadn't seen it in years, but I've seen the clips, you know, people show me that stuff. And I've seen the clips, oh, they're from the church. Right, we, we go, we got same roots here. I'm like, you know what, that's a dangerous person to be around. Go from the church and go prostitute your gift to the world. Now, only those that sell their soul to the devil become ultra famous like herself. And when you know better than that, that's really tough to come back from. And if you listen to that and that's what you like, then you know you're in trouble. And no wonder you don't like to, don't judge anything. Don't judge anything. Preacher, you're talking like that about Katy Perry? That's mean. She's my favorite. Get a new favorite. Charity Gale, that's a good one. I've been listening to her quite a bit lately. Well, she's on Pentecostal, don't even wear makeup. Oh, well, at least she's not prostituting her gift to the world. She's singing to the Lord. That's what I like. Yeah. Now, isn't that something? Jesus said, see, people, that people believe this, that Jesus said, don't judge anything. Then he turns around and tells the woman, it's not right. You're wanting the freedom from a demon? First, let the children receive. It's not right to give the children's bread to the little dogs. Now, she received because she refused to be offended. Ah, now know this, every opportunity for offense is an opportunity for you to go into the curse. Every time, write that down, don't you forget it. Every time you have an opportunity to be offended, that's an opportunity for you to go into the land of the cursed. Well, this wraps up Pastor Jeremy's teaching on the blessing or the curse for today, although there's much more to be heard from him, and you can access that online at our website, AccelerateChurch.cc. Under the Sermons tab, you'll find the blessing or the curse, along with everything else Pastor Jeremy has preached. And if you are in the area, we have a seat for you right here at Accelerate Church. We invite you to join us on Sunday mornings at 10 a.m. or Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. in Amarillo. We're located at 4400 South Crockett. And again, we have a seat waiting for you. We're so glad you joined us on today's broadcast. We believe you'll be blessed as you apply God's Word.